Shalom Akim, Shalom Akwathim. Call Hala Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwardash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. PepsiCo is closing four bottling plants and cutting nearly 400 jobs as it streamlines its operation. I'm sure by now many of you brothers have caught wind of the massive distribution center has closed on a moment's notice in Chicago. And I'm going to say this before it gets before we get to the interview that I'm going to show you shortly. This predominantly affected northern and southern kingdom. All right. Let me come out of this because what I wanted to do was broaden your scope of this particular organization and show you just a few items that falls under its umbrella. This is how a company or organization becomes strong. These various brands that liken unto branches on a tree. All right. This adds and you know, generates more revenues. OK. And here are just some of the items that falls again under its umbrella. They have Gatorade, Doritos. Just look at what Doritos, the funds that it generates. It's a billion dollar brand that includes tortilla chips and dips. All right. It has it has Gatorade, Doritos, Cheetos, Tropicana, Aquafina, Quaker Oats and Lipton. Just to name a few. Speaking of money that it generates, it tells us here, PepsiCo generates $237.29 billion in annual revenues. It states here for us, it is one of the world's largest food and beverage companies. Let me come out of this. You know, many of you brothers are familiar with the Fortune 500 list. It's the top 500 organizations in the world. And PepsiCo ranks 44th, okay? You know how challenging and or difficult it is to sustain and grow your business to stay within the top 45 organizations on the planet. All right. You have to have aggressive. You have to have an aggressive leadership team and aggressive workforce as well. All right. Let me come out of this. Let's go back to that article here very quickly. It states here and I won't read all of this. I just read a few uh, paragraphs. Pericles, Perico, PepsiCo said Wednesday it plans to close four U.S. bottling plants and lay off nearly 400 workers as a part of its efforts to streamline its operations. The company said the closure will impact 136 workers in Cincinnati, 131 workers in Chicago, 127 workers in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and fewer than 50 workers in Atlanta. The Chicago plant is the only one that will fully close. Now, let me come out of this because all of this is prophesied to occur throughout the scriptures. And where do we see this here? In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 4. These are all indicators that America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, is finished. And this place is circling the drain. Let's pick it up right here. It states, when the doors to the streets are closed and the sounds of the grinding fades. What does that mean? The doors to the streets are the companies, the organizations, the employers, businesses will be closing in these latter days. All right. And what's the sound of the grinding fading? That's the employees, right? The hired hands, the grinding phase because they no longer have work. They're no longer employed. Reading on, it states, when people rise up at the sounds of birds, because most of us get up before the birds are chirping, all right, to start our day, to head to the plantation, to earn our daily bread. But all their songs will grow faint, which reads or brings us, bear with me, <laughs> it's a little after midnight, which brings us to this news story here. I want you to not only watch their interactions, but listen to what these Jakes have to say. You know, this, this goes to show you the Jakes love their oppressor. They love their jobs. All right. This is why the scriptures tells us, woe to those who put their trust in Egypt. You know, but those of us who are of the hopefully like we put our trust and our hope in Yahweh, why Yahweh shy. You understand? Let's get right into this. This afternoon, the second shift of workers got the news. I have a daughter in school. I have a house. You know, come on. Uh, Y'all can't do people like that. Y'all. You know, in another point, Akim, forgive me for interrupting, but this goes to show you we are not in the new covenant. Look at what's happening to our people. All right. Watch closely, man, as they interview Northern and Southern Kingdom, who is predominantly affected by these cuts here. A big company. At least give us a heads up. PepsiCo is closing the 60 year old plant at 51st and low. Today, workers were notified when they arrived to work, they would be off the job as of today, but get pay and benefits for 60 days. 
Everybody doesn't know how they're going to take care of their kids. They don't know how they're going to put the kids through school and stuff like that. So it's a shock to everybody. Right now, I'm still in shock. I love this job. I was here early every single day. At 1 o'clock, first vehicle you seen roll through here was my truck. I rolled through here at 1 o'clock, and this was five days a week, sometimes six days a week. And I don't start to 2 o'clock. John Coley represents workers here and in other Pepsi facilities in our area with Teamsters Local 727. I've never seen something like this. A big company acting this way is deplorable. PepsiCo Beverages North America issued a statement saying in part, the decision to no longer operate at 51st Street is a difficult one. This is a more than 60-year-old building that has physical limitations. Juan Gonzalez was on first shift and had worked here for most of his life. 45 years and in two minutes, they finished 45 years of my life. Watch breaking news on... And we get the gist, right? Let's come out of this and let's go right back into the scriptures. This is the book of, Jer of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 16, and it reads, Cut off from Babylon, a.k.a. Ma Babylon is America, all right? Cut off from Babylon the sore, the employees, the higher hands, the help, and the reaper with his sickle at harvest because of the sword of the oppressor. Who's the oppressor? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Let everyone return to their own people. Let everyone flee to their own land. Let's get it again in the book of Isaiah, chapter 19, verse 14 through 16. And it tells us, the Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in her midst. And they have caused Egypt. Again, Egypt and Babylon are synonymous with what? America. All right. In the book of uh, uh, Revelation, it tells us that this place is spiritually called Sodom. And what else? Egypt is also referred to as Babylon. All right. And they have caused Egypt to err in all her work as a drunken man staggers in his vomit. Neither will there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail, the palm branch or bulrush may do. In that day, Egypt will be like a woman and will be afraid and fear because of of the waving of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he waves over it. The Lord is shaking things up here. Second Ezra, second Ezra chapter nine, verse one through six, you know, because those of us that the Lord is working with, we're like unto what? Watchmen. This is why the angel said this to Ezra. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And how do we measure the time diligently? By consistently watching what's going on in the news, you know, what's going on around the world, locally and abroad. And he answered me and said, Measure thou the time diligently in the self. We filter it through the scriptures. And when thou seest part of these signs, the layoffs, businesses closing, so on and so forth, unemployment going up, which I have told thee before, then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore shall be seen earthquakes and uproars. When the people in the uproar and uproars of the people in the world, then shall thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as the, for Salakia, verse 5 again. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Let me come out of this. Let me grab one more here, right? This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 18 on down. And I'll just read a few precepts because we have to comprehend that this is the beginning of sorrows, great mornings, the beginning of famine. You know, these people are worried about how they're going to eat, you know, how they're going to take care of their children, how they're going to pay their bills, you know, and great death. We all know and heard stories in the past that when people have gotten laid off, some of them went home and, and deleted themselves, man. All right. And I'm sure and I can assure you of this. According to prophecy, we're going to see more massive layoffs. We're going to see more things of this magnitude occurs. The beginning of wars. We all know what's going on in Israel, in Iraq, 
and so forth in Russia. All of these, everything's happening all at once. The beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. Ezra's asked this question because through reincarnation, Ezra is back now. What shall I do when these evils come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent for scourges for amendment. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be mindful of scourges. You see, the Lord is doing all these things to wake you Israelites up, to get you to repent. You understand? Because the time of our redemption is drawing nigh. America the Babylon the Great is falling. You have to understand and comprehend that. Repent, therefore, and be converted. Call Halal Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Shalom.